Hey guys, I hope you have been having an awesome holiday season. I'm really excited for this video today because I feel like I've been on a little bit of a break from my normal content. I've been doing a lot of minimalist gift ideas for kids and some minimalist stocking stuffer ideas. So I'm ready to get back into the normal simplifying your life videos that we do on this channel. If you're new around here, I'm Cassie, and my goal is to help you get seven extra hours in your week by streamlining your home. We do this through routines, decluttering, meal planning, and budgeting. So if that sounds like something you would be into, be sure to subscribe down below because I'd love to see you on the next video. So today we are going to talk about how to create a home management binder. That's something that can be really helpful, especially if you haven't been very organized in the past about how you manage your home. And I find typically around the end of the year and beginning of the next year, I start thinking of ways for how I can more effectively manage my home. So in case any of you are in the same frame of mind, I wanted to show you how you can take everything that you need to manage your home and really put it in one place so that it is easy to reference and easy to use throughout the year. Now, as we go through this video, there are a lot of things that you will want to include in your binder, but don't feel like you have to take notes. You can grab in the description down below a free Streamline Your Home checklist. And if you just go through that checklist, it will show you everything that you need to include in this binder. So you're obviously going to need a binder for this project. Anywhere between a three quarter inch binder and an inch and a half would work really well for this unless you have a lot of other things other than what I'm going to show you today that you want to put in the binder. And you don't even have to use everything that I'm going to suggest, but I'm just going to give you a basic overview for if you have been struggling to manage your home, these are the four areas that I would recommend including in your binder. So the very first thing that you'll want to put in your binder if you've been struggling to manage your home is a weekly menu. And you are going to go super simple, as simple as you think you can for your whole menu for breakfasts, lunches, snacks, and dinner. And then you are going to recycle this menu for as long as it takes to streamline your home. And that will give you a little bit of time where you can actually do some of the other things that you need to do to make your home easier to run. Don't worry, you won't be staying with this menu forever. It will get more interesting, but this just gives you back a little bit of time in your day that you can work on some other things. The next section that you'll want to include in your binder is decluttering. Now, if you feel like your home is already decluttered, go ahead and skip to the next timestamp. You won't find this very helpful, but most people that struggle with running their home have too much clutter and that stresses you out as a mom and it makes you do way more cleaning than you actually need to. Decluttering is one of the biggest things that you can do to give yourself time back in your week. So what I recommend you do is get several pieces of paper and write down the large areas in your home that need to be decluttered. So this may be bathrooms on one sheet of paper. It may be the kitchen on another sheet of paper. And you get the idea. Each sheet of paper will kind of represent an area that you need to work on. And then once you figure out the large areas in your home that you want to declutter, make a very detailed list of all of the things that you want to declutter within that area. The reason that you want to be very detailed here is because every time you spend some time decluttering, you want to be able to check something off. This will help you keep up your momentum and it will give you that dopamine hit that says, hey, that was a lot of fun, I want to do that again. And if you just have a list of the big areas, it will take a really long time for you to accomplish any of them. So for example, with this list with the bathrooms, one of the small things that can be checked off is under the sink. Another one is drawers, another one is toiletries, another one is shower tub. And you can just go through and choose one of the small little categories to work on, depending on how much time you have, and you will feel accomplished as long as you get that small little piece of the puzzle done. So you want to do that with each of these sheets of paper with the kitchen. Again, I have a very detailed list so that I can feel accomplished for every single piece that I get done of the decluttering. For most houses, you're going to want between six and seven pieces of paper if your whole house needs to be decluttered, where you are going to be writing down lots of little tiny tasks that you can check off and get done with the decluttering. 
but you don't want to skip this step. You want to be very detailed because that will ensure that you keep going and actually get your house decluttered. And then once you have your checklists written out for every area in your home, you also want to take a piece of paper or two and make some notes, figure out some incentives that you want to implement for your family to get them on board with the decluttering process, figure out when would be a good time to have a family meeting, letting people know that you will be decluttering and just some things like that. You want to just make some notes about how to get your family to buy into the decluttering process because it's so much easier when everyone is on board instead of fighting against your family. Now, obviously I'm not going into a lot of detail about how to declutter your home because we're mainly talking about how to create the binder in this video, but I will link in the cards and in the description down below videos and playlists for how to completely declutter your home. So check those out if that's something you would like more information on. So now we are going to move on to the routines section of the binder. And this is where you are going to put everything that has to do with the routines that are going to make your life easier. Now, I know a lot of people don't really like routines. They feel kind of constricted when they're in routines and they like to be more free flowing, but I can promise you that if you implement at least some of these routines, it will make your life easier. And the more you implement, the easier your life will be. So I recommend having a daily block schedule at least because that just serves kind of as a guide and a framework for your day. And it makes it a lot easier for you and your kids to know what you should be doing and when. And block schedules are fantastic because they allow for flexibility within a framework. Another routine I recommend having is a weekly cleaning schedule. Again, this just makes it so that you don't have to make a decision every single day about what you should be cleaning. You've already made those decisions ahead of time and all you have to do is look at your schedule and see what you should be doing that day. Plus this makes it so your house is completely clean every single week and it also makes it really easy to come back from vacation. You don't have to worry about cleaning your house right when you get back because all you have to do is pick up wherever you left off and you know throughout the next week your house will be completely clean. So I think this just makes life a lot easier and I definitely recommend everyone have a cleaning routine. Another routine I like to have and this is one I would say is probably not as necessary but it will definitely save time if you implement it is a kitchen cleaning routine. If you and your family know the most efficient way to clean the kitchen, it will save you time three times a day. So that's another good routine to include in this part of the binder. The next is a morning routine and an evening routine for moms, for yourself. I'm assuming if you're watching this video, I know there are some dads, but if you're a dad, you can make one for yourself too. It just makes it easier to start and end your day. And for me, it really makes sure that I get some me time, some self-care time where I may not have if I didn't have these routines in place. So I think it's really important and I notice a difference when I have these routines. Another one that we love to have is daily routines for kids. Our kids, we call them their checklists. They have morning and evening checklists and I think it just makes it easier because instead of me having to tell them, did you make your bed? Did you brush your teeth? Did you drink water? Did you do your chores? It's all on here and they can really manage themselves a lot easier than if I were micromanaging it. So I do recommend this, especially if your kids are over four, you still have to help them with the reading, at least I did for my kids, but it just makes it easier. You don't have to be inventing it every single day. You already know the routines in place and so do your kids. Definitely if they're over five, this makes life a lot easier. If they're younger than that though, I still did it with my kids. I would show them every day what was on each line and which checkbox they were checking off. And I felt like it made it easier as well, even when they were younger, but to each his own, you don't have to do that if you find it more complicated. I have seen some, actually my sister has some for her kids where it's little pictures instead of the words and that can work really well for younger kids. But I definitely think having a morning and evening checklist for kids makes life easier for them and for you. Now this is another one I would say maybe more optional, you don't have to do this, but for me, any of these that I've added have saved me time and energy. 
and that is having a weekly block schedule. So this is figuring out which of your days are going to be busy and which are simple and kind of stacking things on the busy days so that you can actually have down days in between all the busyness. And I notice a big difference for myself with this. I don't feel like I'm going all the time as much when I implement the weekly block schedule as I do when I just have stuff every single day of the week. Now, those are the main things that you want to have in your routines portion of your binder, but here are a few other things that I find nice to have. And the first one is a cleaning task organizer because some chores you don't have to do every day or every week. Some are monthly chores, some are quarterly, and some are annual. And this just helps keep track of if you actually did them and when they need to be done. Another thing I like to put in this portion of the binder is something that details which chores are regular and just part of life and which ones they can earn extra money for. I just find it's easier to be as clear as possible and when they know that they're never going to earn extra money for making their bed, it's just one less discussion that you have to have with your kids. So. Again, this one isn't as big of a deal. It's not going to necessarily save you a lot of time, but it's just making that decision ahead of time. And if your children are motivated by making money, like my kids are, it's very easy when they come and say, how can I make some extra money? You can easily reference this sheet and tell them some of the different chores that would be options. And along that line, I like to keep a running list of chores that they can earn money for that need to be done. In the fall, it may be things like raking leaves, in the winter, maybe shoveling snow, in the summer, washing the car. And I also like to put how much they can earn because again, then you're just deciding that ahead of time. You're not having to get into a discussion about it. Although for older kids, it can be good for them to learn how to negotiate. So it's up to you whether you want to decide that ahead of time or decide on it before the job is done and then you can pay them afterwards. So for mine also, I have a name. They can claim which chores they want to do and we check off if it's been approved by my husband or I and then we keep track of if we've paid it or not. Just makes our lives a little bit easier to just have it all in one place. And then this last one, again, this is just kind of a nice to have, not necessarily going to save you a lot of time, but it can be nice to have a family chore calendar for the whole week because then you can kind of have an at a glance view of what everyone should be doing and you can have an accountability for who should be doing what without having to get out everyone's individual lists and figure out what's been done and what hasn't. You could easily at a glance see what needs to be done on Wednesday and then look around and make sure it has been done. So that one, again, is just more of a nice to have, but definitely can save you some time in the long run. Now, again, I'm not going into a ton of detail for how exactly to set up these routines, and that's because I already have a lot of other videos showing you how to do that, and I will link to those in the cards and in the description down below. So now we are moving on to the next section of the binder, and that is meal planning. Remember, I promised things would get more interesting, but the reason we do the super simple meal plan first is so that you actually have the time to declutter and create your routines. And then once those two things are done, you can create what I call a set it and forget it meal plan. This is where you put your breakfasts on a rotation and the rotation that you choose depends on how much variety you want. I have a full video explaining how to do this as I have videos for every single step of this process as well, just like the other ones. So I will link that playlist in the cards, but you will choose a rotation for your breakfasts. You will choose a rotation for your lunches. You will choose a rotation for your snacks. And then you have a couple of options once you get to that point. You can either just choose a simple rotation for your dinners. This can be really nice if you work outside the home and maybe food isn't such a big deal for your family. You just want something simple and nutritious that you can get on the table easily. This would be a really good option if that kind of describes you. But you also have an option that I personally prefer and that is to have theme nights. Every night of the week in our house has a specific theme and each theme has a rotation. Then once I have my theme nights decided and my rotations figured out for each theme night, I can plan out my meals for my entire year. And I actually do this every single year. Using this meal planning method took me from 
hating meal planning and dreading doing it every single week to actually enjoying it and looking forward to it every year. And if you really wanted to, you could actually just do this once and recycle your meal plan every single year and you would never have to meal plan again. Now, if this sounds kind of confusing and you aren't exactly sure what this would look like, check out that playlist that I will be putting in the description and in the cards. And I have all kinds of videos talking about what a theme night is and different theme night ideas to kind of get the ball rolling and help you figure out which theme nights would work well for you. So something I include in this part of my binder is a choosing the theme nights worksheet. You can write in different options to see which theme nights would work well for which days. Now, this is where it comes in handy when you have that weekly block schedule that I talked about back in the last section, because you can reference that and see, oh, Wednesday is a really busy day for us. So I want to have a really easy theme night on that day. And you can kind of compare, you can try different options and see which ones would work well for your family and which seven you should go with. Now, one thing I do recommend with choosing your theme nights is I think every single mom should have at least one night off a week. So for me, this is our leftovers night, but for you, it may look like going out to dinner or getting takeout or whatever works for your family. I recommend having this night on a busy night of the week so that you don't have one more thing that you have on your plate. But other than that, the sky is the limit and there are so many different theme night ideas that you can choose from. Once you have your theme nights figured out, then the next step is just to figure out what your rotations will be. So for example, on Friday nights for us, we call those build it meals, which is any meal where every person is kind of making their own plate. So things like falafels or fajitas or burritos or burgers would all go on this theme night. And I would just make a list of all of those types of foods that I want to include. And then if you want to do what I do and plan out your entire year, you can get a meal planning calendar. Now I have one that I have created that I really like, obviously, or I also really like the Amy Knapp Big Grid calendar. It's a huge calendar that has dinner menus on every single day just like this. And if you don't like either of those options and you don't want to put it on your regular calendar, you want that to be clean and just have your appointments on it, you can go to the mall usually right after the first of the year. They have all kinds of sales on calendars and you can just get a cheap one where you can pop it into this binder. You can three hole punch it and then at least you still have all of your meals in one place that is easy to reference. So for the calendar in my workbook, you can either do it like this, have it so every month is two pages and it's all kind of separated out so that you can easily just look at it in a binder and flip through to wherever you need to be. Or what I do is I actually, I, I print this all off at FedEx because I don't have a printer at my house. And while I'm there, I have them spiral bind it and put a clear thing over the front so that it doesn't get damaged and put a back on it as well. And then I have them printed on a thicker paper and do double sided because I actually do use mine as my calendar. And then the last section that is really nice to have in a home management binder is a budget section. I think it's good to have somewhere where you're keeping track of your net income so you know exactly how much money you're bringing in because that is usually much different than what you are told you are making. I also like to have a spending tracker in this section of the binder because sometimes it can just seem like money is disappearing. And if that's the case for you, it can be a good idea to just write down for a week or for a month or however long you need exactly where every dollar is going. I also like to have a monthly expense tracker so that I can see exactly where every dollar is supposed to be going for the expenses for the month. We also like to have a monthly expense calculator so we can see how much we're spending in each section. So for home expenses, food expenses, vehicle, communication, debt, kids expenses, entertainment, and other. And that just helps us organize our money and make sure we know exactly how much we are spending in every area. Then another page just for the totals. Again, 
I think the more ways that you can look at things and see exactly how much you're spending in every area, the better. Especially now with everything online, I find it's easier to lose track of little things here and there if you aren't looking at it frequently. So putting this in the binder makes it very easy to reference and you can look at it very easily at a glance. Then I also like to have in this part of the binder a fixed expenses versus flexible expenses worksheet. Now, the reason I like this is because often we tend to think of our expenses all as fixed. How much we spend on food, that's just, that's a number and that's what it is. How much we spend on insurance, how much we spend on our vehicles. And the truth of the matter is that very few of our expenses are actually fixed. Some things like our mortgage and how much we pay for electric, things like that, we really don't have much control over. But some things like insurance, you can actually save a lot of money if you will shop around. Cell phones are another one. And there are a lot of things where if you're having a hard time making your ends meet, you can make adjustments. Yes, it takes some work. You have to spend some time on the phone. I did this a couple of years ago with our insurance and it took me, I want to say a week or two of being on the phone during every nap time, figuring out if the policies are the same and telling them all the information they need to give us a quote but it ended up saving us so much money that it's completely worth it. Anytime you think you're spending too much in an area, there's a good chance that you actually could be spending less. So I think that's a really good sheet to have in the budget portion of your binder. And then you can also keep track of as you're decreasing your flexible expenses, figuring out what you were paying, how much you are paying now, and then your monthly savings. And that's a good way to make sure that you aren't just spending that extra money on junk or just stuff that you don't need. And you can actually put that savings towards some really cool things like maybe taking your family on a trip or saving up for a big item like a trampoline that you've always wanted. In this part of the binder also, I like to have a charity worksheet with different ideas for charities and how much we want to be donating. Something else that's good to have in this section of the binder is some place to keep track of if you are increasing your income which can be things like getting raises or getting second jobs if you need to. And again, just a good idea to keep track of how much you are increasing your income by so that the money isn't just getting wasted. It's really easy as you increase your income to just increase your standard of living. And if you're wanting to save for things or pay off debt, you don't want to just do that. You want to save for those things, pay off the debt first. So it's a good idea to just keep track of exactly how much you have more that you can be putting towards those things. If you have any debt, it's a good idea to have a debt calculator. And then you want to have a place where you are keeping your entire, what I call your initial budget. So this is before you have paid off any debt and changed any expenses. This is just kind of as things are now. So you can keep track of how much you have coming in, how much you have going out in different ways. And then if you do have any debt that you would like to get rid of, it's nice to have some sort of tracker where you're keeping track of how much you have paid off, how much you have yet to go. And this will help you keep accountable. It's kind of like we talked about with those little tiny pieces of the decluttering. Every time you make a check mark, you're getting that dopamine hit. It's telling your body, this was a good thing. We should keep doing this. It's kind of the same thing with the debt. If there's a way that you can keep track of it and motivate yourself to continue going with paying off the debt, you are much more likely to finish the process. And then once your debt is paid off, this is another way that you can really be in charge of your money instead of the other way around. And that is to create multiple savings accounts for different things. If you just have one large account and you throw all of your money in there and then you take money out of that for everything, it's really easy to maybe accidentally borrow from your kid's college savings when your car breaks down and you need to make a car repair. But if you have a separate car account and a separate vacation account and a separate account for your children's education, you can be sure that you know exactly how much is in each of those accounts and you can know what your budget is when it comes time to buy a new car or make those repairs on your car and you won't accidentally be using your vacation money instead. And then finally, once you have your debt paid off and you are building up those savings accounts, I recommend creating another budget where you can see exactly where everything is going and you won't have that debt to worry about anymore. So you can really start saving for some of those fun things that you have been putting off. 
So those are the four different sections that I recommend having in your home management binder. And I'd love for you to tell me in the comments down below if I left anything out that you think should be in every binder please let me know. I love reading those comments and hearing your ideas. And if you would like your home management binder to look like what I showed you today, I will put the links to these templates in the description down below. And if you are ready to completely streamline your home in this coming year, check out my membership site, Simply Streamlined, where I break down the entire process of streamlining your home into 15 minute tasks. And you are able to streamline your home in just 15 minutes a day. And you have access to all of these workbooks and also Google Sheets. If you prefer to do things online, then you can create all of your templates and do everything that way. And also in the membership, I have weekly coaching calls where you can come on, ask me any questions that you have. If you get stuck and need some help brainstorming, I will help you streamline your home in the best way possible that fits with your family and your lifestyle. Now, before you go, don't forget to grab that free streamline your home checklist because that will help you remember all of the things to include in your home management binder. As always, I'm Cassie with makingtimeforgiggles.com and I make videos all about how to simplify your life. So please subscribe down below if you would like to see more videos like this one. Mm -hmm.